I've talked a lot previously about the rebuild that's happening at Manchester United, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, but looking at the big picture, what changes have already happened? What I'm going to do in this video is run through what I consider to be the most important changes that I've seen happen so far at United under Solskjaer. And towards the end of the video, I'm going to run through your opinions that you sent in both on Twitter and on the YouTube community tab. So thank you very much for sending those in. And it's good to get your opinions in these videos too. If you are new to United People's TV, make sure you go down there and hit that subscribe button. But let's talk about the rebuild. Now, while the football itself on the pitch was extremely important for Solskjaer, for me, the most important thing he had to do was change the culture at the club because the Galactico style had taken over. So many players at United were on inflated wages. Money was the main determinant about whether or not a player played for Manchester United in a very short space of time. Solskjaer has basically cut the head off it. Romelu Lukaku, don't want to play for United? Out you go. Sanchez, out you go. And a Herrera, for me, I loved the guy when he was a United player, but for him to not get that money was a big moment for United. A watershed moment where we finally said no to the money and to a decent player who would certainly have been better than most of our midfield options this season, simply to stop that culture from festering anymore. And it's not just those sorts of players. Players who aren't good enough for United. Marouin Fellaini, goodbye. Matteo Darmian, goodbye. So many players out the door in what was quite a substantial number of exits this summer. And it's left us with a squad, albeit thin, that wants to play for United. And there's plenty of players still in there that aren't good enough to play for United. It's not that good a squad. But with a squad that wants to play for the manager... You can get results like that Liverpool game, which, again, I consider a bit of a watershed moment for Solskjaer because going into it, he was under intense pressure. And had he lost that game and had we had a humiliating performance against Liverpool, I could have seen it as similar to when Moyes lost to Liverpool and City in the same week. The discontent would have grown much, much louder, but it didn't. Everybody put in a good shift and the right attitude is going through the squad and it's reflected on the players. You can see it. Because there are players who were average previously who are playing above themselves. Scott McTominay is the absolute prime example. He's gone from obscurity and being basically a teacher's pet under Mourinho that he was using to sort of get a one-up on Ed Woodward more than anything to becoming our most important central midfielder. Absolutely sensational season he's having. And that's because Solskjaer has given him the platform to do it. Andres Pereira is improving, Fred's improving, Rashford now has six goals in his last seven games, despite being really under the cosh as far as criticism was going. And that's all because of the attitude and the cultural changes that are happening at the club, allowing this to happen. And of course, the culture goes deeper than just the players on the pitch. Solskjaer has been making key appointments behind the scenes as well, improving our scouting department. This week, a new recruitment analyst joined. Previously, in September, we had a new analysis operations manager join the club. Whether or not all of these appointments work remains to be seen, but Solskjaer is implementing changes in every single sector. And he's the new variable. He's the man that's leading this change. Mike Phelan, Kieran McKenna, Michael Carrick, they're all important as well. But Solskjaer is the man that's leading the vision. And without a technical director to have done all of this, as well as on the pitch stuff, I think is impressive. Now the football clearly needs improving and that's going to come later in this video but for all this, the changes that he's made towards the culture in a short space of time, I think he's done a hell of a good job. And another major thing that Solskjaer has had an almost immediate effect on is our transfer recruitment policy. Over a billion spent since Fergie retired and we've hardly got anything to show for it. A handful of good signings, bucket loads of terrible ones. But Solskjaer has come in with his own vision and it's worked with the three signings we've had so far. Dan James, a young, hungry winger with talent to nurture and it's been nurtured. He looks like an absolute gem. Aaron Wan-Bissaka, more established in the Premier League but still very young, made an immediate difference to our starting eleven. Harry Maguire, the experienced leader that we sort of needed, he's been the least impressive of the three signings but you can still see how he's changing our defence. And all of these are tied into a vision. Hopefully it's not just this British only vision because I disagree with that. But I can see 
Similar characteristics in every single signing. Solskjaer is signing players for the club. He's not signing players for his own philosophy, like Van, Van Hal did, like Jose Mourinho did in the short term, just to win the trophy next season. Solskjaer is building a squad and building something that he knows that when he leaves it behind, he's leaving the next manager a good set of players, a good squad to build on. And that's something that Solskjaer himself has been in charge of. It's clear that Ed Woodward, I think, stepped away from it a little bit this year. Especially in the fact that all of a sudden we're signing Harry Maguire when Jose Mourinho couldn't sign him a year before. Solskjaer, again, the culture is what's impressed me the most. But if this summer is anything to go by, the next few transfer windows should be good. And of course there wasn't enough done in the summer. I'm not saying this squad is perfect. We needed a central midfielder. We needed an attacking midfielder. We didn't get them. But if the three signings are anything to go by, United are going to be much, much improved in the upcoming transfer windows. And for us to really return to the top, performing in the transfer market is one of the most important things that we need to get right. And we did get it right with pretty much every player that left this summer, I agree with. I agree with all three signings as well. We needed more, but it's a hell of a good start by Solskjaer. Now, some of you still feel that Solskjaer is a cliche manager, and to an extent he is. But certain things are cliches for a reason. And using the youth at United has always been at the core of the club. And Solskjaer has done that. Like Van Gaal, who let a lot of players leave in order for the younger players to get opportunities to come through and get game time, Solskjaer has done the exact same thing. Fortunately enough for Oli, he's come into a much better crop of players. We're not looking at Tyler Blackett and Paddy McNair anymore. We're looking at Scott McTominay. We're looking at Greenwood. We're looking at Brandon Williams, Angel Gomez, Jimmy Garner. United have got a good set of players coming through. And going back to McTominay, the thing that's impressed me the most is I look at him in a similar way that I look at Jordan Henson at Liverpool. Jurgen Klopp has made a distinctly average player far, far better than he is. And he's indispensable to that Liverpool team. That's what McTominay is to United now. Now, our midfield is horrendous, so we'll take any half-good player. And maybe the competition will change when Popper comes back and we get a new signing in there, but Solskjaer has improved McTominay immeasurably. And that's a key component. But playing the youth and giving them minutes and game time, on the one hand, some might see it as a way out of signing any players sort of Glazer apologist type move, but I don't think it is. Our younger players now, because of the reinvestment in the academy, are much better than they were previously. And Solskjaer is giving them their opportunities. I think he's handled Brandon Williams very, very well. Could have thrown him in straight away, but he might not have performed like he has done. I want to see him starting every week, but a manager knows how to manage their players. And that's what he's been doing with all of them. And I've been impressed by it. Angel Gomez might be frustrated. Tahis Chong might be frustrated, but maybe they're not completely ready yet. Either way, Solskjaer really is using the youth and bringing it back to the core of United. Combined with the good new signings and the culture, you can see the changes that are being implemented. But of course, one major thing still needs to happen. Solskjaer absolutely needs to get his identity imprinted on this team because I don't really feel you can properly say the identity is seen every single week. We know what it is. He wants to set up on the counter-attack, hit hard and fast. When it works, it works. Chelsea. Wonderful game. That's part of Solskjaer's philosophy that he wants to imprint. And maybe it's been slightly more difficult for him because he's acting as a sort of director of football and a technical director at the same time as being a manager. United don't have the infrastructure for it all to work. But most managers, you look at Brendan Rodgers, the philosophy is the first thing to come across. So the football itself, out of all the changes that Solskjaer has made, is Certainly been improved from what it was under Mourinho, but I just disagree with the style. It suits United more, but there's a lot more work that needs to be done. United and Old Trafford needs to be a fortress again. Teams have to be shit scared of coming to Old Trafford to play. That's a big thing that Solskjaer still has to achieve. The football itself, being better in second halves, killing off games better, holding 1-0 leads better, possession. There's a lot of the football that needs improving. But I've seen the foundations of it all that if he can do that and put it on top of the new culture, of the improved attitudes, of a better transfer window, of the new youth that's coming through, 
you can see the structures getting built for United to then step up and back towards Liverpool and City, which is the ultimate aim. So they are the main changes that I can see and what Solskjaer needs to do next. But what do you think? I'm going to run through a few of your opinions now that you sent me on Twitter and YouTube. Let's get straight into them. First one up here from Invincible United saying he managed to get Pogba in form again when he arrived. Unfortunately, he had to play him as a DM since the board made no efforts to replace Ander Herrera. Pogba was fantastic in those three months. And if he can get him coming back and into this setup, maybe Pogba can find his love for playing for United again. But at the moment, I would say Pogba's out the door. Because of the first point I made, if you don't want to play for United, doesn't matter how good you are, out the door. At the moment, that applies to Pogba. RRM saying a positive has to be the signings we make. Good recruitment for once. Absolutely agree with you. United's three signings were fantastic. Three of United's best players this season. Dan James especially. Outrageously good. OMK saying positives are the recruitment of the right players, the ideology, clearing the dead wood out. Surprise Dan James how quickly he's adapted. Brilliant point there. He has adapted so well. And his decision making really is spot on. Brandon Williams and his performance. Even Rojo. That's what I mean. Even Rojo's starting to play good. That's down to the, the overall culture of the squad. The slightly more average players, they take it up. Everybody just takes it up a level. Next one here from Karen saying, praise the Lord for removing the Deadwood players. And Karen's talking about the appointments behind the scenes. Excellent point there, Karen. And I completely agree because they are just as important as improving on the pitch, off the pitch. If we are to have a structure to build on going forward after Solskjaer, that structure behind the scenes is so, so important. Mankul Kelly saying, youth full stop, looking like they want to play for United. Absolutely. Signing players that want to play for United is one of the most important things going forward. Solskjaer clearly has that with his three players. Any player coming from the youth academy will obviously have that. It builds a loyalty in this team. And it's something that Adam Crafton said uh, when I interviewed him for The Athletic, saying that Solskjaer is building a sort of squad of loyal players. And it's a smart play. And you can see that in how they want to play for United and for the shirt. And a few comments here from YouTube. From Ritesh, he's saying if the future transfers are anything like the current three, it's going to be a strong team. Absolutely great point there. Talking about Gomez and Chong. I don't think Chong is good enough for United at the moment. I think he could do with a loan spell. Talking about Williams replacing Shaw and Young. Spot on there. And you're happy with the direction that Oli has taken it. I think everybody is, mate. Alvin here saying positives. United are capable of beating the big teams this season. Look at the results. We've beaten Leicester, who hardly anybody can beat. Beating Chelsea twice. Getting a point against Liverpool when they were unbeaten. In the big games, we can turn up. We need to improve against the lesser teams. But you can see the positives. Talking about the attacking, attractive football too, which you definitely have seen. Michael Duffy talking about his biggest positive being the ability to get ruthless and get people out of the club. He said he would after the Everton 4-0, and he absolutely followed through on it. So you can't deny him that. No matter what you think about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as a manager, clearing the devil is something he's done, and he said he would do. Chiru saying, I love how Ole has used the pace of the players and made our team deadly on the counter. Counter-attacking football is the most enjoyable to watch, isn't it? And we can do that. We do need to learn how to beat teams in the low block. But if teams play with a high line, we'll make chances against them. Final comment here from Nathaniel. He was saying there are many positives, talking about McTominay, Dan James, the link-up play with the front three. That has been exciting. And there are so many reasons, I think, now to be excited about United going forward. We got through a rough patch. The Newcastle game. Bournemouth was bad, but that was a bad result in a good bunch. But United overall, you can see the vision that Solskjaer is trying to do. And like a lot of you have said there in your comments, it's exciting going forward. Regardless of how Solskjaer's reign comes to an end at United, I think he will go down as the most successful United manager post-Ferguson. And I'm not talking about trophies. I'm talking about somebody who can look past the fact that we need trophies and that we need some things a whole lot more. A cultural shift. An improvement in the transfer window. Buying players that want to play for United. Solskjaer can see all these and... That's what I mean when it, he's got his heart in the right place. And he might not be the best tactical manager in the world. But United don't need that at the moment. We need to be rebuilt. And brick by brick, Solskjaer is doing that. Has done that so far. Has a lot more work to do. 
But if the signs from this season and from that transfer window are anything to go by, it's going to be a positive six to 12 months coming up under Solskjaer. Let me know what you think about the rebuild so far under Solskjaer. What's impressed you the most? What do you think needs most work on? Let me know in the comments below as always. And if you did like this video, make sure you drop a like on it too. Until next time though, take it easy. Bye.